All right, so I want to welcome uh, the few crew members that are here, the crew, Google, Photos. And today we're going to be talking about backing up your pictures, backing up your videos, backing up all those other things. Because every single day I have a crew member come to me and say, my hard drive stopped working, my flash drive stopped working, my computer got a virus, this, that, and I have this happen, and my assistant Rolando has this happen, and it's a disaster every time it happens. Do you agree, Rolando? I agree. It's a disaster every time it happens. So I want to show you an app called Google Photos. I'm going to show you how I set it up on my iPhone, but this is going to work, this is going to work across all of them. But what I want to do first is I want to ask you a question. So here's the question I want to ask you. Right now my phone is not connected to the internet, and I'm going to do something, and I'm going to ask you a very simple question. Okay. So I take a picture. Let's see there's a picture right there, right? Yeah. I have one picture. It's a terrible picture. Let's take a better picture. That was a horrible picture. So here's the question. How many copies of this picture do I have? Five or six. One. I took one picture. I have the picture just on the phone. There's no internet or anything like that, right? Okay. I have one copy of the picture. I then take the picture and I send it to my iPad. Yeah. I then have how many copies of the picture? That's two, obviously, so... There's no internet, so we're, we're, we're not implying internet. I have yeah. two copies of the picture. Uh -huh. I then send it to this iPad. I have three copies. I then send it to this phone. I have four copies. I then send it to this laptop. I have five copies. But here's the question. This is something a lot of crew members don't understand. How many backups do I have? Here's the answer. Zero. You might have your phone. You might have stuff backed up on an external hard drive. Anything that moves around, though, is not a backup. So it's just a copy. So what I want you to realize is if you have any pictures on your phone, are those pictures backed up? They're just there. Even if you take them and you put them on your iPad, when you go out in port, if you bring out your iPad and you bring out your phone, and you leave both your iPad and your iPhone somewhere, guess what? It's gone. Yeah. Every single day, I have at least one person call me and say, I have a hard drive that's not working. We have 1,200 crew members on board. So we have 1,200 crew members on board. Come, come on, come guys, come, come, come. Have a seat, have a seat. No, it's fine. So as we were discussing, let's, let's sit, sit in front of a computer, guys. Sit in front of a computer. Rolanda's well, going to make sure everything's working. Okay. So let me go back, and you guys don't answer the question because you already know the answer. So I'm going to take a picture of you right now, okay? Well, I'm going to have you move up to this seat because this one's already set up. So I'm going to take a picture of you. I have no internet. I have nothing like this. I have a picture of you. How many backups of that picture do I have? How many copies? I just have one copy, right? And if I put it on there, I have two copies. And three and four. So I put it on five devices, but I have a lot of copies. How many backups do I have? Zero. Here's the important thing. Backups don't move around. So I know you all have backup hard drives or backup flash drives or something like that. And you hand it to your Paisano to get some TV shows or some movies or something from them. Am I correct in that assumption? And your Paisano drops the damn hard drive. And then guess what happens to everything? Backup gone. Backup gone. So even though we put it on these five devices, I got it on my iPhone, I got it on my Samsung Galaxy S8, I've got it on my iPad, I've got it on my big iPad, I've got it on my MacBook, they all live in this bag. So if the bag gets lost, guess where everything is? Trash. Trash. So if I were to take it and I were to put another copy, let me give you guys a handout here so you have it. If I were to take it and I were to put another copy on this computer right here, which stays in one location, then how many backups do I have? Just one. Just one. But I can have five copies. All backups are copies, but not all copies are backups. Does that make sense? Yes. So all backups are copies, but not all copies are backups. Now, I am a nerd, and you see I have seven devices. So how do I back my things up? I don't have a hard drive. I don't have anything like that. I don't pass it around. What I have is I have two hard drives. You know how you have a one terabyte hard drive? Yeah. My hard drives are 32 terabytes. And you might look at me and go, what? So all of my videos are taped. All of these videos, that little camera right there, they're taped. And they're really big. They're about 10, 12 gigabytes each. And I keep them all in original, in original format. And my hard drives are very different than your hard drives. I want to show you my hard drive because it's really cool. Now, this is the hard drive you're going to have in the future. I don't expect any of you to have this type of hard drive right now. This is something you're going to have in 10 years or so. It's a hard drive you don't need to plug in. 
Whenever you're in the same room as it, it just backs up everything on all of your devices. And the important thing is, it stays in a single location. Now, you ever read Dr. Seuss before? No. No? They have two characters called Thing 1 and Thing 2. I'm going to introduce you to Thing 1 and Thing 2. Let's do this one. Okay, yeah. Ah, come on. So these, mm -hmm. I'm just going to show you on the TV screen. That's not a cheap phone. Serious, Dave? Yep. Yeah. It is 32 terabytes of storage. 32 terabytes of storage. And I keep it all in there. And the thing is, nobody can drop that or do anything with that because it's 32 terabytes of storage. Now, I keep work stuff on it. I keep personal stuff on it. They duplicate each other. They do very useful things. But I have never lost data before. I think that's the important thing. I've never lost pictures. I've never lost video. Because each of those has two copies of important things inside of it. So there's actually six copies of everything inside of there. Here's the most important thing, though. This is what I want you to understand. If something moves around, it is not a backup. So if you have a hard drive that you loan out to your friends and you say, Friend, friend, uh, come look at the hard drive, you take it and get my movies, and they drop your hard drive, guess what? It's finished. I want you to understand that. So I'm going to pass that back to her so she gets one of those too in the back. Um, so what I want to talk about is I want to talk about Google Photos. Now, I am sure we are all young, and we have Gmail accounts, correct? Yeah. Everybody have a Gmail account? Okay. Nobody has a Yahoo or an AOL account? <laughs> uh, just FYI, if you have friends that have Yahoo accounts, Yahoo's going out of business next cruise. I do not use Yahoo. But do you use it? Yeah, in the Facebook, I use Yahoo. Okay, so you want to go into your settings and change Facebook to Gmail before June 8th because Yahoo's shutting down on June 8th. So, Yahoo and AOL? Why? And what? Why? Because they're getting bought by the American cell phone company Verizon. And Verizon's going to shut them down and they're just going to make it for old people now. So uh, that's, that's the truth yeah. to it. But here's what I want to talk about our main cameras we all use, all six of us in here, is our phone, right? That's the main camera we use, but we don't back up the stuff on her phone. So I want to talk about Google Photos, which is really cool. And all you need for Google Photos is either an iPhone or an Android or a Windows or a Mac computer and a Gmail account. So I want to show you how you go about doing this. Let me get this guy going up. So I've got my iPad here, and I'm going to send my iPad to the screen. And I'm sure we've all been to either the App Store or the Google Play Store before. Am I correct in that yeah. assumption? So if I go here... And I click on the App Store, and I search for Google Photos, it'll be the first hit there. You'll need your Apple password to get Google Photos on an iPhone or an iPad, or on an Android phone, you'll need your Google password, which should be automatically saved in your phone. When you get it, it's going to download. I'm going to give you some tricks that I won't give to the guests to tell you how to get all your pictures uploaded and port and stuff like that. Uh, there's a couple good spots to get all your pictures uploaded in like an hour. You just go have a beer, uh, I'll tell you. In Stockholm, next time we're in Stockholm, I'll tell you where you go, you get everything. But once we install Google Photos, we go ahead and we hit open. I love my iPad case. Ooh. Hold on. Hold on. Not only does it do that, but it also has a stand on it. Oh my god, that is so cool. And open it. Seriously? Yes. <laughs> Best iPad case ever. Uh, but so oh how Google Photos works is it backs up all of your photos backed up safely, organized and labeled automatically, so you can find them fast. I'm going to go through this and I'm going to say get started. The first thing it's going to ask is a dumb question, but it has to ask it. Can Google Photos access your photos? Yeah, yeah of course you can. Uh, can Google Photos send you notifications? Okay. Then it's going to ask you to sign into your Google account, your Gmail account. It's likely if you already have a Gmail account, it's just going to sign in automatically. And then it's going to say, do you want to back up and sync all of your photos to this Google account? And you say, yes. Yeah. Here's an important question, though. It's then going to say, do you want to use cellular data to back up all of your things? The answer is probably no, unless you have unlimited. I mean, if you have unlimited, then go for it. But uh, you don't want to really use cellular data. I have unlimited on my iPad, so I can say continue. Here's the important one. I know you already set this up. It's going to ask, what quality do you want to upload it in? High quality or original? The right answer is high quality. What that does is it uploads your pictures up to 16 megapixels. So if you have a camera that you're using on your phone, it's only a 12 megapixel camera. So it uploads your pictures up to 16 megapixels, and it uploads your video up to full HD. You know they have 4K, and some of our phones take 4K. There's no reason to take 4K video. There's no reason, because it's just five, six times bigger. For, a, for one minute of 4K video, it's a quarter of a gig. 
That's a quarter of a gig for one minute of 4K video. Brother, brother, come see right here. Come, guys, come, come, come. Yeah, either of those spots right there. Well, I'm just gonna make sure everything's set up because we're gonna go to the computer in a minute. So you just download Google Photos right there, and then you hit continue. Now, I want you to understand, until 30 seconds ago, until 30 seconds from now, this iPad was empty. It had no photos, no videos, nothing. The idea of Google Photos is it gets all of your pictures, all of your video from across all of your devices in a single location. So I've got this guy right here. And now you'll see it says today. Yeah. This iPad was empty and in about 10 yeah. seconds time, yeah. I've got all the pictures from today including the selfie. Yeah. <laughs> now here's the important oh thing God. to understand though. Yeah, I, I did this pictures. on my iPhone. You took that, you didn't take that picture with my iPhone, did you? You took that with this phone. All of your pictures from across all of your devices, so if you have an Android phone and an iPad, or a Windows computer and an iPad, it synchronizes everything. This works on Android, um, Android, Mac, iPhone, iPad, Windows, everything like that, and it synchronizes all of your pictures. So you see I have her picture from today, and I have this picture that I just took, and it makes sure that you will always have your pictures and your videos across all of your devices. It sounds a little bit too good to be true, doesn't it? Yeah. Here's the thing. When you want to search for something, right, what do you use to search? Do you use Yahoo? Do you use AOL? What do you use? Use Google. This is about brand loyalty. If Google keeps providing cool services, you're not going to go to a competitor and use Bing or use anything like that. So Google Photos costs Google a lot of money to do, and it doesn't cost you anything, but it makes it so that if you go ahead and you look for a bar in Estonia, that you want to go out and you want to have a drink in a bar in Estonia, you type in bar Estonia, it's not random. Which bar comes up? Companies are paying to be there first in the list to give you that concept. So I've just installed this program. Again, you get it from the App Store, you get it from Google Play. You install this program and then you get all of your pictures. And here's the nice thing. It streams the pictures to your device, almost like a Netflix kind of thing. So it's not taking up space on your device. I know you have devices that are running out of space. Yeah. So it streams the pictures to the device. Now I'm going to show you something on my iPhone in a minute um, that you're going to need for sure. I'm going to show you this because this is I couldn't tell what button it was on yours because it wasn't in English. But uh, we'll get there in a minute. So we just install Google Photos on everything and follow the steps. I've got oh you guys right here. I've got uh, a little handout so you can pass that. So we install Google Photos on everything. And then we follow those steps with those arrows. But here's the thing. How many of you have run out of space on your device before? Yeah? Come on, you have plenty of space? Come on, Ros? No. Plenty of time you run out of space. Now, what's taking up all the space on your device? Pictures. Pictures. Yeah. Well, actually, it's not just pictures. It's video. You don't realize how big videos are. Now, I have a 256 gig iPhone 7 Plus. So I don't need to clear this out as much. But, and I have thing one and thing two, which you saw. So thing, thing one and thing two are 32 terabytes, so they're okay. But my iPhone is my main camera. I do also use my Samsung phone, but my iPhone is my main camera. And I've got Google Photos right here. And Google Photos has all of my pictures. You remember the picture I just took? And you see that it's got that little recycle sign right there? Yeah. It means it's going to upload those pictures. So it's going to upload those pictures. What it does first is it uploads them in a lower quality, so you have them. And then when you get better internet, it uploads them high quality. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you a place in Stockholm to go. I went there yesterday. I got two months worth of photos backed up in an hour. Two months worth of photos backed up in an hour. And you see it's backing up all four of those right now and they'll be good, but here's where it gets cool. Let's say your device is running out of space. You can hit this little bar up here and you can say free up space. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna say you have 8,299 items. These photos and videos have already been safely backed up to Google Photos Library at the quality you've selected. You'll still be able to view them here at any time as long as you have an internet connection. So when you remove them from your device, you need to have internet to view them, but they are safe in Google's cloud. The two biggest companies in the world in terms of how much money these companies are worth are Google and Apple. You don't really need to worry about your pictures going anywhere. The two biggest companies in the world are Google and Apple. And if I were to hit remove on an iPhone, it would send all of these items to the trash. So let's say, do you want to allow Google Photos to delete 8,545 items? And you could say, okay. On an Android phone, it would delete them directly. But the cool thing is your phone has completely run out of space. So you can free up your pictures from Google Photos and you have all of your older pictures 
will be stored in the cloud, but you don't have to worry about that. So even if you don't have an SD card or anything like that, now I can look back pictures. We're going to go in a few minutes. I can look back pictures all over time. Now, the newest pictures, you notice that picture there, the newest pictures that came in the last minute or two. Newest pictures always show at the top. The oldest pictures always show at the bottom. What if you want the newest pictures at the bottom and the oldest pictures at the top? Rolando, what if you want to swap it? You want to put the newer stuff at the bottom? Tough. Go to the top. Go to the top. So it's going to go like that. Now, this is going to back up all your pictures, and you'll see all these pictures, all these videos are now backed up. Here's the thing. You install Google Photos, you can install Google Photos on the ship. Unfortunately, I teach so many guests about Google Photos that I had to limit the amount of speed it can upload or else it would break the entire internet to uh, have it uploading. So we have Google Photos limited on the ship. It will do the small size backup, but when you go out in port, Sweden, Denmark, anywhere like that, you go to Denmark, you go to Tivoli Gardens in Copenhagen, you turn on your Wi-Fi, you walk around, you have a cotton candy, you have some beer. By the time you leave there, 4,000 photos are uploaded. What you don't realize, in the Caribbean, the internet is el poo poo. But in Europe, you can just go out to a bar and you can get, like, I would not teach this in the Caribbean because it's really hard to do it in the Caribbean. And what it will tell you is inside of Google Photos, there's something that says Assistant, and it will tell you how many photos are left to back up. Now, mine says backup complete because I went to the mall yesterday and I let it upload, but before I went to the mall yesterday, I had 1,700 pictures and videos to back up. So I had 1,700 pictures and videos that I needed to back up for the last month or two. Now, does that make sense to a lot of us? We just install Google Photos on our phone, we sign in, we follow those steps right there. But here's the question. Not all of our pictures are on our phones. There's two other places the pictures might be. One is on your computer, and one is actual, possible, I know it's weird, printed pictures. Yeah. So if you have a printed picture and you want to make it digital, how would you take a printed picture and make it digital? You would take a picture of it. That's what most of us would do. Like on a cruise ship, we don't really have access to a scanner. So we'd go ahead, and I'm just going to, I think I can do it right here. I've got that picture, and I take a picture of it. And do you see how terrible that picture comes out? Yeah. People are glared and everything like that. Here's the cool thing. Google Photos makes an app that's built into Google Photos called PhotoScan. You can download this one as well. And here's what you do. You take a picture. Is that Cornell? Yes, that is Cornell. Uh, oh yeah, you weren't around for this today. Uh, yes, that is Cornell and some headstocks. Uh, and then you move your phone to those four points. And what it does is it removes the reflection from the photo. That is so cool. So it's by Google Photos. It's an app called PhotoScan. It's right inside of Google Photos, whether you have iPhone or Android. Ah, we can adjust the corners. I took it a little sideways. But the cool thing is, you'll see, I was on a, it was on a slant, so that's why it didn't work. But I actually have no artifacting. I have no light, because it takes five different photos and blends them together. So you can take, if you get a physical photo from somewhere, you can make a digital copy of your physical photo. You don't want to have it on a slant, but let me show you one more time, because it's really cool. I never get around to showing this to the guest. Uh, photo scan is the name of it. And again, you just go like this. Let me go back. And you take a picture. You get the whole picture in there. It's a weird size picture. And then I just move it to there, and it takes four more pictures from the main picture. Okay, <clears throat> and then it's going to have it digitally, and that'll automatically go up to Google Photos. So you just let it process, and you'll see there's actually a really good copy of that photo, which is what's really cool. We can go in and we can digitize real photos, but elsewise, where else are pictures? They're likely on your computer, right? If you have a computer at home, you have hard drives, you have flash drives, you have pictures that are not on your phone. Does everybody have some pictures that are not on their phone? So I want you to go to the computer that's in front of you right now and shake the mouse. So you've got a computer in front of you, I've already set it up. Just go ahead and shake the mouse on the computer. Okay. I want, this, is, this is a follow along class. Uh, the password is I love Google. One word. Google. I love Google, one word. Rolando, can you double check that everybody's okay? Yeah. Rolando. There we go. I love Google and hit enter. There we go. Okay. 
So this is, brother, brother, have a seat, have a seat. If you want to sit, have a seat, we're, we're still talking. Okay, so this is the main page of Google Photos. Do we all see something like this yeah. on our screen? Yeah. So we're gonna click back one. This is the main page of Google Photos. Just click, yeah, that little, the little white button, yeah. This is the main page of Google Photos, and you'll notice it's got all of my pictures there from across all of my devices. Now I'm gonna show you what you can do with this in a minute, but we have to talk about how we get stuff up from your computer. So we have to talk about how we get stuff up from your computer. So do you see the three little bars in the upper left-hand corner? Yeah. If you click on those three little bars, yeah. you'll see something that says app downloads. Do you see that? Yeah. So you're gonna hit the three little bars and click app downloads. And you'll see a button, you don't need to click it, but you see the button that says download. Now this is on the sheet I gave you. So it's on the back of the sheet I gave you right there. You'll get there in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, click on app downloads right there. And you'll see this button that says download. You don't need to click on it right now, but I wanna show you what happens when you click on it on your computer at home. Mm -hmm. So this will work on Windows computers or Mac computers. Does that cover everyone? Yeah. Okay, good. Come on in. Windows computers or Mac computers? You, you have either a Windows computer or a Mac computer. I have a Linux computer, but that's a little bit different. So it's then gonna ask you to sign in to your Google account. So you're gonna download the application and it's gonna say, sign into your Gmail account. And we discussed, we all have Gmail accounts? Yes? Yeah. You guys are good? Okay, cool. It's okay. And then it says, do you wanna back up photos and videos from your computer, including hard drives and memory cards? Mm -hmm. And we say, continue. And we sign in with our Gmail account. But I want to show you where this starts. So I type in rsmehaid And then I need to put my password on the next screen. And what it's going to do is it's going to automatically ask me some questions. Uh, there was a problem. What? Let's try this one more time. Okay. Computers. But if I go in, here we go, rsmehaid at gotrchnrd.com. And it's going to automatically ask us, okay, here's the big question. Where are your photos on your computer? Do you know where they are? Where are they? Near my pictures folder? I mean, your pictures or photos or anything like that? Let me try this one more time. richard.com. I don't know why I always chance it. And do it this way. Let me try this one more time. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to say, okay. Uh, it's going to say, I don't want to play with you today, Richard. Yeah, really. One more time. And it's going to ask you, where are your pictures? So here's the question. Where are your pictures on your computer? They're near my pictures folder, yes? Yeah. Are they also on your desktop and in all these other folders and things like that? And they might be in folders inside folders inside folders. Yeah. Something I always say to the guests is your pictures are in what we call a fuster cluck. Fuster cluck, reverse the first two letters. Cluster. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It, they're all over. You've got duplicates everywhere and everything like that. So it's gonna say, <coughs> where are your pictures? Most of us are Windows users, so the answer to where your pictures are is in your My Pictures folder, yeah. or on your desktop, or anywhere like that. So it's gonna say, okay, where are your pictures? Google Photos will automatically back up uh, photos and videos from selected sources in your in your photo library and you say where it is you can add a folder if you wanted to and then what size do we upload it high quality guys mm -hmm. so you weren't here for this discussion but we upload it in high quality and it uploads all of our pictures now here's the cool thing every time you plug in an SD card if you have a normal camera or a flash drive or a hard drive it's gonna say do you want to automatically upload the pictures on this thing to Google Photos and if you want to you can say sure upload those. So this is how you get all of your old pictures backed up on Google Photos. Now, you've installed Google Photos before. If you have an Android phone, you likely already have the Photos application on your Android phone. And you might have gone through, you might have set it up, you might have told it to back your stuff up. But here's the question. It backs your stuff up. Now what? Now what do you do with it? This is going to get scary and scary cool at the same time. You can search through all of your pictures based on who's in them, what's in them, where they are, automatically. Okay, Who's in them, what's in them, where they are, automatically. So, where you get that download button, the app downloads, we're going to click this little white arrow in the upper left-hand corner. Go ahead and click there. <coughs> and we're going to go back to the main...
Google Photos page. Now, when you're talking about Google, what is Google known for doing? One single word that they're known for doing? Search. So we can search our pictures. And this is what you were missing. If you set it up on the ship, I welcome you guys to come back. Just um, You can come back the, in the mornings one day or in the evenings one day. And we will set up Google Photos for you properly because there's one thing you can't do from the ship. You can't do facial recognition. Facial recognition only works in the US <coughs> in Google Photos due to some crazy laws and stuff like that. But we have a hack. That's what I was trying to do on your phone. But you need to clear up some space and then you can bring it back. And you just install Google Photos and then we'll install this hack for you and it'll give you facial recognition. So if you hit this search box up here, go ahead and hit the search box. Right on the top, click on the search box. You will see some pictures of people show up in a few seconds. Give it a couple seconds. Come on. Okay, you've got it. You'll see these, these circles with people's faces inside of it. When you get your pictures uploaded, don't type anything in just yet. No, you'll see the people right here. So you'll see the people right there, and it automatically identifies people in your pictures, the people you take the most pictures of. So your family will show up first and everything like that. The thing you need to do is you need to name those people. So you hit on that little black arrow, click on the little black arrow there, and it's going to show all of your people. And the cool thing is, once you name the people, just hit on the little black arrow right there. Once you name the people, you only need to name them once, and then you can search based on who people are. So give it a second to load. If you scroll down a bit more, scroll down a bit, <coughs> you'll see some people that are not named. It automatically finds everybody in your pictures. Click on someone that doesn't have a name on it. <coughs> doesn't matter who it is. Just click on a random, uh, random person that doesn't have a name on them. Any blank box with a name, click on it. Doesn't matter. Just click it. Click a box. And it's going to say, who's this? So it wants to know who that's a picture of. We only have to name someone once over the entirety of time. So all we need to do is we need to name everyone we actually care about. Now, if you're not getting faces, again, come see us, Mira Rolando or Wandi, who's coming. We'll get you, uh, get you going with faces. Rolando's leaving in Copenhagen, and Wandi uh, from Haiti's coming. He's fantastic. But I can go in, and I got this, and I would click who's this. If it, This is my library, so I would click who's this, don't click it, and then you would name them. And here's where it gets really cool. Make sure you've clicked on a person. Just click on any person. You'll notice you have this search box at the top. So we can now type in my name, which is Richard, and it'll find all the pictures of me. So R-I-C-H-A-R-D. And hit enter. And it'll find all of you. Yeah, go ahead and put the search box on the top. And it'll find all the pictures of Richard. Richard. I just hit enter. Give it a couple seconds. And uh, <coughs> the last picture of me was on May 17th. It takes about two or three days after you take a picture for it to identify the faces inside of it. So you notice I had some pictures today that were me. When you typed in Richard, they don't show up there. So it takes two or three days after you take the picture to automatically identify the faces. But here's the cool thing. Not only can you look up single people, you can look up multiple people together. So we can type in Richard and... Ronnie. What? Ronnie. Ronnie? Oh, yeah. No, we're going to type in Richard and Leslie. L-E-S-L-I-E. -E. <coughs> now, store... Go ahead and type in Richard and Leslie. I want you to see this. This is really cool. I have... 500,000 photos and videos in my Google Photos library. Half a million photos and videos in my Google Photos library. And I type in Richard and Leslie, and it's automatically going to find all the pictures that have Richard and, I think Richard Leslie, Richard Leslie works fine, and it finds all the pictures of Richard and Leslie. Now, do we all understand that? We named Richard, we named Leslie. Now are you ready to just go... I want you to type in Richard and Leslie at the end and type in SHIP, S-H-I-P, children. Ship children. Yes. <clears throat> It'll make sense in a minute. <clears throat> and it's going to find, out of 500,000 pictures, a single picture of Richard and Leslie on a ship as children. 1997. I am probably one of the only Mongolos you'll ever meet that sailed as a passenger on Celebrity. That is the Century. That is me and my sister on the Century 
when I was a kid. So I could go in and I could do that. But here's the important thing. I never told it what a ship was, and I never told it we were children. So go ahead and get rid of the word children from your search. So you can click on children and just delete it. And then hit again, and you will see more pictures. You'll see me and my sister on a ship. Now it also includes that. This search is what's called an eliminative search. So it eliminates down, which you'll see myself and my sister on ships. Never did I tell it that there was a ship in there or that we were children. It automatically did that. Now, let's take it to the next level. I have another sister. Her name is Julie. So I want you to type in Richard and Julie, J-U-L-I-E. And it's going to show pictures of Richard and Julie. Now, that is all the pictures. Now, you'll notice that Leslie, my other sister, is also in some of them. So we can actually go in. We're not going to do this, but you can go Richard and Julie and not Leslie. So you can get rid of people if you wanted to. Yeah. But here's where it gets cool. I can look for pictures people took in a specific location. So after Richard and Julie, I want you to go ahead and type in New York. And we're going to get Richard and Julie in New York. <coughs> now, here's the question. How did it know that picture was in New York? Thoughts? So your phone has GPS on it. So your phone knows where you are because it has GPS. And even if your phone's in airplane mode, it can still get a GPS location. I'm sure a lot of us keep our phones in airplane mode a lot of time, unless we have our three SIM card. Uh, but uh, you know, you keep the phones in airplane mode, and I, I don't care. I'm happy. Um, you, <coughs> you keep the phones in airplane mode, and you still get GPS. Also, if you have a camera, newer cameras have GPS in them as well. But do you remember, remember those cars that drove around and they took pictures in front of people's houses, the Google cars? I don't know if they do that in your countries. Did they, did they do that, the street view cars? No. So they took pictures in the front of people's houses, and they captured their Wi-Fi networks, and they actually figured out the names of their Wi-Fi network and assigned GPS locations. But here's another cool thing. I'm sure all of us in this room have used Google Maps at some point in time. Do you know how Google Maps knows how long it takes you to get to places? No. It actually is tracking people in front of you and then giving that information back to Google, which is then interpreting it and giving you that information. So what's cool is if I take a picture with my phone and I have a GPS location on there, and you have the same thing in the background of your picture, it will do that automatically. Now, we've got Richard and Julie in New York, but I want Richard and Julie in New York in the snow. So just type in Richard and Julie in New York snow, and it will eliminate it down to Richard and Julie in, don't, you don't say in the snow, just type in snow. And we get Richard and Julie in New York in the snow, automatically. All I ever told Google Photos is who Richard and Julie are. So not only does this back up everything, unlimited for free, but it also allows you to search these pictures a lot easier. So if I wanted to find a picture, I could type in a person, I could type in a location, I could type in things, I could type in all those things. The other cool thing, do any of you have pets? You might have pets, dogs, cats. So you can actually look for pets as well by their breed. So if you go up and you get rid of what's here, get rid of the search box here, you can just type in boxer. So we all know the dog, the boxer. Go ahead and type in B-O-X-E-R, and it's going to find pictures of a boxer. But not only is it going to find pictures of a boxer, it's also going to find pictures of Mike Tyson, because he is a boxer. We didn't define dog. Now understand, the only thing we've ever told it is who people are. We said this person and this person and this person are this person. So we've defined boxer, but if you scroll down, you'll actually see Mike Tyson. <coughs> and we get that right there. And we can not only search for one type of dog, we can search for multiple. So you can type in boxer and Westie. A-N-D-W-E-S-T-I-E. A-N-D-W-E-S-T-I-E. And that's another dog that my mom has. It's called Westie or a West Highland Terrier. And you'll see the boxer and the Westie. W-E-S-T-I-E. And it's going to find the boxer and the Westie. Now, that's cool on its own, but let's take it to the next level. What if I told you that Google Photos could actually read? Can read text. I'm going to show you a really cool app. Have many of you ever used Google Translate before? 
Really awesome app. I'm going to show you this. This is built, built into another class that I do, but I want to show you this because it's really cool. Let's say I have this sheet of paper, and it's written in English, but I want to make it go into Spanish. There's an application called Google Translate, which allows you to point your phone. Now, I use this in Russia as well, so I would recommend if you download this. And I could say, I want to go from English to Spanish, and I just point my phone here, and it reads. That's in English. Yeah, go what? on. Who is that that is? You can hop in on both phones or just all phones. All phones. Even all phones. It's an app. It's called it's called Google Translate. You can like this one and we can do it in Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What? Like if I don't like the No, not written, just, written. just typed. Just typed. But like yeah. if you're if you say, I'll show you. I was out, let me pull up a picture from last cruise. I gotta go back a little bit. Um, I found a sign last cruise. <laughs> So, so I came across this sign in France. I came across this sign in France, and then I point my phone at the sign. Do you have do you need internet for this? No, you don't. That's the cool thing. What you need to do is you just download the language. So if you download Russian, I'll show you. This is actually. And you don't need. Internet you need internet to download it originally. Yes, that's it. But here, take a look. So this is a sign in Russia at one of the palaces, and I've got that sign, and then I point Google Photos at the sign, not Google Photos, I point Google Translate the sign, and it goes from Russian to English. Maybe next cruise, we do an apps class. One of the days in the evening. Same time, 11 o'clock works, or a little later, 11.30? What do you say? 11.30? 11.30. 11 11 good? Okay. So we'll, we'll do an apps class. I'll show you some other cool stuff like this. I want to finish Google Photos today, but we'll do apps next cruise. Tell your friends, bring them along, and I'll show you how this one works, and some other ones work. I'll show you some magic tricks and stuff like that. But that's a story for another day. But once it can read that, it can actually interpret what you're saying. So we can actually type in, even in other languages, but we're not going to do that. I want you to type in the search box, Richard... Halloween, we all know Halloween, right? Yeah. <coughs> Halloween, Orlando. So we type in Richard. R-I-C-H-A-L-L-O-W-E-N-O-R-L-A-N-D-O. And it's, uh, Orlando is, uh, that's actually Orlando's nickname. We don't call Orlando Orlando because the guests can't remember that. We call him Orlando. Do you know why we call Orlando Orlando? Because he's a fun destination, but you wouldn't want to stay very long. <laughs> oh, Orlando. Okay, but we should get Richard Halloween Orlando. Do we all know the date of Halloween? Uh, October 31st, right? What's the date on this picture? Yeah. September 26th. Yeah. Yeah. But do you see picture number three? It says the word Halloween inside of it. It actually read the text for Halloween, and it can search text in your photographs. So it can search text inside of your photographs. So we can search for people, we can search for places, we can search for things. We can even go ahead and search for food. So Richard, Halloween. So we can even search for food. Now, Rolando went to Sushi on 5 tonight for dinner. I don't understand sushi, because I find sushi disgusting. Um, because sushi's just not cooked fish. And it's... Thank you, my friend. You're with me. Why are you going to eat this crap? If you want to eat some fish, you cook it. You want some rice? Go to Kermes. Yeah, go to Kermes. Go to Kermes, go to back. Okay. But I'm sitting at sushi with this team on the Celebrity Reflection, and they're like, I'm like, sushi's disgusting. And they go, no, the stuff you eat is disgusting. And one of my favorite food groups, for Americans, you know, our, our guests, uh, one of my favorite food groups is donuts. I love donuts. So why don't you go ahead and type in donut on the top, D-O-N-U-T. And it's going to automatically find all of the pictures I've ever taken of donuts. <coughs> now, not all D O N U T. No, get rid of the rest. Just donut. Oh, just donut. Yeah, I don't have uh, Halloween donuts in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> just no, 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 no. We don't need we don't need Orlando. Just a donut. Now, it is not only going to find pictures of donuts. It's gonna, and these are from uh, last week. So it's actually found pictures of donuts from last week. And if I wanted to, now I'll tell you, I had a donut in Stavanger, Norway before. Many, I want to show you this. Uh, 
So we're going to type in donut and we're going to type in stavanger, S-T-A-V-A-N-G-E-R. <coughs> I think so. Okay. So <coughs> I type in donut, stavanger. S-T-A-V-A-N-G-E-R. I've never shown this in a guest class before. Now you'll see I have two different times I've gone and had donuts in Stavanger, Norway. The problem was I forgot where the place I had the donuts was. So what's cool, go ahead and click on this picture right here with the donut in the case. Click on that picture. Do you see that little eye in the upper right hand corner? Yeah. Yeah. Click on that little eye. And it is going to show me the exact location of the donut. And if I actually open it on my phone, Google Maps will navigate me to where I ate the donut. Think about that for a second. It's crazy. Google Maps will actually navigate me to where I ate the donut. Now, I want to show you another donut. We're going to go in the upper left-hand corner. Now, I'm going to show you why a lot of the people that sail with us are um, like Fat Richie. Uh, I want you to type in donut and type in West Palm Beach, W-E-S-T-P-A-L-M-B-E-A-C-H. Donut, West Palm Beach. <coughs> this is a donut that I ate. That is a donut, West Palm Beach. You should see in a couple seconds. West Palm Beach. No. And that's actually a Krispy Kreme bacon cheeseburger donut. <coughs> donut, West Palm Beach. Take a look, Rolando will help you. And you'll see, it's a cheeseburger with. <coughs> Ooh, I got a little cough. Um, <coughs> I love this offline. line. I don't know why. Okay, I'm going to continue doing it on my screen and I'll show you the last few things I just want to show you anyway, and then I'll take any questions you have. Here's where this starts getting really cool. Now, you followed along a bit on there. Now, you know this group. Now, how many of you have a little bit of time left in your contract? You're not going to go to Russia once. You're not going to go to Russia twice. You're going to go to Russia like 12 times. Do you care when the picture was taken or just where the picture was taken? We just care where the picture was taken. So here's what's cool. Just watch my screen. If I go to the search box, I can actually automatically sort my pictures based on where they're taken. So I can go ahead and I can type it in, but I can also see a visual representation of everywhere I've taken pictures. All the places that I've taken pictures of over time, I have a visual representation. And you'll see I've got Miami, Oja, Southampton, Bergen, North Miami Beach, Geringer, Hollywood, Stockholm. So if I click on Stockholm, it's going to show me not my pictures just from yesterday. It's going to show every picture I've ever taken in Stockholm. So if I want to find a picture in Stockholm, here's all my stuff I did yesterday in Stockholm. But here's what I did last year. I took a lot of pictures yesterday. Here's what I did last year in Stockholm. This is from July 7, 2016. So I can actually look all over time, all of my pictures across all of my devices. And we'll see that's Stockholm, and we've got it right there. So we can type that in. But here's the last really <coughs> cool thing Google Photos will do for you. And then I'll take some questions. Google Photos will actually edit your pictures and videos for you. So when you upload pictures and videos, it's going to automatically edit those pictures and videos for you. Now, where it shows is on your phone, because let's be honest, that's where primary amount of us are going to use this. It's going to be on our phone. I'll show you on the computer because we can all be on the same thing at the same time. On your phone, there's something called Assistant, and it's going to tell you when it makes something. So you'll see it made a stylized photo. It actually made, let's take a look at this. I have no clue what's about to be here, uh, but it made a movie today when we were out in Estonia. <clears throat> so it took all the pictures from today and turned them into a movie. I'm not sure what's about to happen. Mm, I might have to download it because it's probably a pretty big movie. But it'll go in and I will have a movie. I'll show you another one that's really cool. Let me see if I can get it on my phone. I actually have it uh, on my computer. So I can go in. <coughs> They're called creations. And what's cool is it's going to automatically make different creations. So this is a video. You remember they had that concert last cruise, the Fire and Ice concert? It uploaded all of these 
videos that I took of it and put it together into its own movie. It added the music, it added everything like that. Um, let me let it load, but I'll show you. I'll show you what it does with a picture real quick. Actually, the picture is very cool. So you see this? <coughs> you see this picture right here? I did not take that picture the way it looks. I want to show you <coughs> the original picture and then what Google Photos did to it. <coughs> so if I download the original, which is what I'm doing right now, I'm going to pull down the original photo. Download the original. So you see that picture right there, and in about four seconds, you're going to see the original picture. I took that when we were going into the Garinger Fjord. Take it right off of deck five and opening. So here's the, no, that's not the original. That's the fancy one. The original picture looks like El Kupu. No effects? I don't want to, there we go. That's the original. And then that's what it automatically made. It enhanced the colors, it did all that. I didn't even have to tell it to do that. My old assistant, Elza, took a picture of the Vatican in Rome. It automatically colored part of the picture. So she took that picture and it automatically made part of it color and part of it black and white, which is what's really cool. So Google Photos will pop up and say, hey, look, we've made something really cool. We want to show you this really cool thing that we actually made, and it's going to make really cool things. It will even automatically animate your pictures. So I go into Creations. You'll see here's Rolando and Ritza in a cable car. And we did a burst of pictures, and it automatically animated that. It made a little movie. I'm sure at some point, if you've been on ships for a while, you've swam with dolphins. And this is swimming with dolphins, and they take a burst of pictures, and it's actually automatically animated. And you'll see in a couple of minutes, in a couple of seconds, that pictures are actually going to start to move. So you can have the pictures actually move. You can have all these things. But this is some video I took on the celebrity reflection, no, the celebrity solstice of a new production show called Broken Strings. And what happened was I took all the video on my Samsung phone, and I had taken a picture of a light bulb that was out in the eye lounge before the show on my iPhone. And it put it all together and made a movie across multiple devices, which is what's cool. So the pictures, don't, the pictures in the video don't all have to come from one source. It will actually automatically put these things together. I'll let it load up real quick. So it'll automatically put these things together. It will set it to music all on its own. <coughs> I did not do anything you're seeing here. So not only does it back up all your photos and videos, not only does it, uh, not only does it let you search them, but it also makes things for you. So this was about... 30 minutes of video I took, and it automatically cut up the video, it did all the edits, it put in the music in the background and everything like that, all on its own. Which is really crazy to actually see it do all of that. So it did all of those different things. Thing is, if you set up Google Photos on the ship, or if you set it up in Europe, you won't see the facial recognition. So what you can do is come by, see myself or Rolando, and much like you're the guest, we will get the facial recognition going through, but this is actually the... You see this video, I took this in the, one of the production shows, and that was just taken with my phone. I wasn't taken with the high quality, it was taken just the light bulb that was out in the eye lounge. I just took that with my Samsung Galaxy S7, because here's the thing. A lot of people go to me, hey Rich, why do you carry both an iPhone and a Samsung phone? Samsung phones are much better in low light than iPhones are. So if, you, if you're in a low light situation, use a Samsung phone. Take a picture of a TV show, yeah, you're in a movie or something like that, or you know, you're in the movie theater recording a movie to put it up on the pirate bay. You want to use a Samsung phone. It does a much better job doing that. So, believe it or not, it usually takes me double this amount of time to do this same class with the guest. And we as crew members did it in half the amount of time. So, yay, yay, yay. Do you have any questions, or does Google Photos mostly make sense to you? Here's, I am here until June 23rd, so if you have any questions, feel free to... Come up, see myself or Rolando. Wandy won't know much about Google Photos because he's never seen the class before, but Rolando is, is pretty good. All of your pictures across all of your devices, and that way, if this phone drops in the toilet, it's okay. You still have your photos. Because the main thing we have is we have our photos and we have our emails, and we know we can always get our emails back, but you can get your photos just as you had your emails. Next cruise, um, we have a whole bunch of port days. So maybe before one of the non-interesting port days, uh, we will do an apps class in here where I'm going to show you different apps. I'll show you one where you can fake that you have a tattoo and send it to your parents. <laughs> I, I, I faked to my mom that I had a tattoo. I'll show Google Translate. I'll show you one that tells you when you go to the movies, when you can go run and take a pee. <coughs> How to learn different languages and different stuff like that. So we'll do that at 11 o'clock someday next cruise. We're going to do that in here because I leave the cruise after that. So 
That's it, guys, for today. My name's Richard. This has been Crew Google Photos. Bye!